I'm Karen Robertson. I'm Senior Research Manager at Historic Scotland and I'm one of the editors of the State of the Environment report. I'm going to talk about the historic environment and how it's being shaped by the natural environment. Scotland's historic environment is made up of physical evidence of past human activity, as, as well as things that we can't see and touch, things like stories and traditions. Our historic environment includes archaeological sites and monuments, buildings, gardens, landscapes, artefacts and archives. Our historic environment is unique and irreplaceable. We, we need to make sure that we preserve it for future generations. It enriches Scotland's landscapes and townscapes. It's central to our country's distinctive character and also makes a huge contribution to Scotland's national identity, to our culture and economy and to our well-being. If we look at some of the figures, Scotland's historic environment is estimated to contribute more than £2.3 billion to Scotland's economy. The historic environment directly supports around 40,000 full-time jobs. It's a huge magnet for tourism and inward investment and attracts around 14 million visitors each year. It can promote a hugely positive image of Scotland at home and abroad and creates a sense of place and a unique cultural identity. Heritage-led development can benefit communities and the economy, bringing about regeneration of the built environment, and it can also create work in the construction industry. Some parts of Scotland's historic environment are protected through a process called designation. Designation aims to identify the most important parts of the built environment, and it recognises their significance and enhances their protection. There's nine types of designation. I'll just run through these. World Heritage Sites. Being placed on the World Heritage List is a really high accolade and it demonstrates the international recognition of the site's significance. In Scotland, there's five cultural World Heritage Sites. The Dantonine Wall, the heart of Neolithic Orkney, New Lanark, Old and New Towns of Edinburgh and there's St Kilda. Listed buildings, there's more than 47,000 of these in Scotland. Conservation areas, there's more than 600 across Scotland. Battlefields, shipwrecks, gardens and designed landscapes. A large part of Scotland's historic environment isn't designated. This means that it has a lower level of protection. However, it's still very important to Scotland's overall historic environment. It's difficult to assess the current and changing state of the overall historic environment, but there's good information on a number of the individual elements. There's good data from the Buildings at Risk Register, which is established in 1990. It tells us about the proportion of buildings that are at risk across Scotland. 2013 survey showed us that there are 8% of listed buildings at risk across Scotland, and this has been improving over the last few years. The condition of scheduled monuments, nearly 9 out of 10 of Scotland's scheduled monuments are in an optimal or satisfactory condition, and there's evidence to show that since 1998, around a quarter of scheduled monuments have shown an improvement in condition and around a further quarter showing a decline. There's a number of pressures that affect the historic environment. There's pressures from development, from lack of appropriate maintenance, from inappropriate land use and changes in land use. There's also pressures from climate change, coastal erosion and pollution. Visitors can also be a pressure for the historic environment, so it's a, a fine balance to encourage people to visit the historic environment, but also to preserve it for future generations. In 2014, a strategy for managing the historic environment was published, Our Place and Time. There's three main elements to protecting the historic environment. There's policy and legal arrangements. There's guidance on how to manage the historic environment better. And there's also a programme of investment. Each year we spend more than a billion pounds on our historic environment and funding comes from a wide variety of sources across the private, public and voluntary sector. There's a variety of things that the public can do to improve the historic environment. Understanding and valuing the historic environment more is a big area that the public can get involved in. The majority of the historic environment is in private ownership and private funding is the largest source of funding for the historic environment. It's important that we encourage investment by private owners to maintain the historic environment for the long term. <laughs>